Kentucky in basketball tradition. Seven NCAA titles overall. This year, Coach Tubby Smith's goal is number eight. After a three and five start, his Wildcats are roaring. Today in Nashville, Kentucky seeks Southeastern Conference title number 23, the perfect capper to a remarkable turnaround. Ole Miss celebrated rare SEC regular season success. Now Coach Rod Barnes wants more. Ole Miss combines raw power with a run and rev attack that at times can be overwhelming. An SEC title today would elevate Ole Miss into the national spotlight. Listed capacity at the Gaylord Entertainment Center in downtown Nashville, just over 19,000. We will have more than 20,000 on hand today as the Ole Miss Rebels meet the Kentucky Wildcats for the 2001 Southeastern Conference Championship. Both teams had to come from behind in semifinal encounters. Florida was up on Ole Miss by 10. The Rebels came back to win it. And Kentucky found itself down by 15 in the first half to Arkansas before emerging. Good afternoon, everybody. Vern Lundquist along with Bill Raftery. No surprise here, Bill. Kentucky back in the title game. But what a rocky start they had at the beginning of the year. Well, now they have confidence. They're paying attention. And one subtle move by Tubby Smith. He's moved Tayshawn Prince up front. They're smaller, but they're quicker. His ability down in the black area makes him a tough matchup. He's got the funny corkscrew release with the jump hook or the turnaround jumper, but also he addresses double teams as they dive to the 10. He's got the vision and the long arms to deliver. Well, the Wildcats come in with a 21 and nine record. You know about their legacy. Ole Miss, a chance to really shine on a national stage. They have had a marvelous, marvelous year. They feel they're the best kept secret, and I sort of agree with them. They got some outstanding talent. Justin Reed, one of those guys that can play inside or outside. He's got the ability to put the ball on the floor. Of course, Lockhart up front. Raheem is a stud. If they can get these two involved, it could be a tough night for Kentucky. But the slashing ability and the challenge of Reed as he gets to the 10, and also the dive and the post up of Raheem Lockhart aren't able to finish with the best of them. Both in the top 15 in the final uh, Associated Press rankings, Ole Miss and Kentucky. CBS Sports coverage of the road to the Final Four is sponsored by Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fit you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Oldsmobile and your local Oldsmobile dealers. And by The Brothers, a new film from Screen Gem. Pass it on, but don't pass it up. It's turn it seven. This beautiful Gaylord Center located right in the heart of Music City. And today, Ole Miss against Kentucky. Only the fourth SEC championship game ever for Ole Miss. Rod Barnes in his third season as the head coach and all-conference guard for Ole Miss in 1988. And his starting lineup, Justin Reed, just a freshman. And Raheem Lockhart, the senior up front. In the backcourt, Sanders, Jason Holmes, and Jason Flanagan. And the Rebels come in with a 25 and six record. Tubby Smith in his fourth season as the head coach at Kentucky. And the Wildcats getting off of that three and five start now have rebounded Tayshawn Prince, player of the year in the SEC. The freshman Jason Parker joins him up front. In the backcourt, Gerald Fitch, who was recent, really a cohesive element in uh, solidifying the turnaround, Keith Bogans and Saul Smith, who today starts his 140th game for his dad's program. These two teams have met 97 times. Look at the overwhelming dominance of Kentucky. And uh, just as a footnote, Ole Miss has never defeated Kentucky in the SEC. They did beat them. In game one this year, the only time the two teams met in regular season, that was on January 20th. And the officiating crew today, Andre Patillo, the lead referee, Gerald Boudreaux, and Tony Green compliment him. And Rob Barnes is hoping his players are not history majors and don't remember all of those defeats. Just put it in the back and play. I think they will. And we are set to go. SEC Championship, Ole Miss and Kentucky. Tip control by Flanagan for Ole Miss. Kentucky, Vern Lundquist goes, minute, minute. Here's Flanagan picked up by Saul Smith, gets the uh, pick from Lockhart. Now Sanders goes right side to the freshman Justin Reed. 
Good ball moving left side. There's the entry pass to Lockhart. The first shot of the game, an air ball, but taken by Flanagan and then Prince with the block for the Wildcats. The long armor to Law. Here is Saul Smith, looks inside. Nice job defensively by Flanagan. Now they come left side. And Keith Bogans, who has had 23 points in each of the two games in this tournament, misfires on his first shot. They feel he's quicker. He's the small forward, usually can beat people, and has great strength around the rim. Uh, Jason Holmes and Raheem Lockhart, the senior. First team all SEC this year. Off the dribble, Flanagan underneath. Nice touch pass. Misfiring from point blank. Lockhart muscles it up and in. And, and that's a great use of muscle, too. I mean, he's a guy that doesn't elevate, but carves out so much area and then propels upward. First basket of the game taken by the Rebels. To underneath on the Smith pick and roll. Now Bogans looks to Prince, who's established in the low post. He should be able to elevate here, too. Works his way, there's a little soft jump hook. Misfires, but he can hit, hit that shot all day long. He should be able to elevate over Holmes. It's a wonderful looking release, plus he can bring guys outside, knock the three down. Two nothing Ole Miss in the early going. We played just under a minute and a half. Kentucky concerned about how the refs call the game. They feel Ole Miss gets after you, little nickel dimers here and there. Sanders kicks it left side, top of the key, almost traveled. Controls it, kicks it back outside. Shot clock at six. Here's Lockhart with a jump hook off the mark. Great defense. Are they really contained? That's so important with this slashing Ole Miss team. First dribble, take it away. Now Prince drives, puts it up. Doesn't get the soft roll. Into the hands of Reed for Ole Miss. Kentucky misfiring on his first three shots, and Ole Miss only 20%. A little tightness, maybe, huh? That's I would a, think so, Bill. Yeah, very important, I think, to talk about seeding. Holmes gets the open look. And another rebound for Prince. That's his third. Great check out by Fitch. Parker can't hit. Uh, they, they're trying their power game and getting good opportunities. Parker's very tough in the block area. Got to take away his duck in. Planning a good job defensively by Saul Smith. Now Prince, he does an equally good job on Reed. And here comes Kentucky Fitch. Outlet pass to Smith, alley-oop. Oh, got it. Elevation with some strength. Keith, say it isn't so. And Saul, who I thought played very well on the comeback in the second half, solid with the delivery. Saul Smith came in with 118 assists, 119 now. But here's an Ole Miss counter at the other end from Sanders. David, pretty good with the bounce, very confident. 4-2 Ole Miss. Gerald Fitch, nice job defensively by Holmes. Here's Flanagan with Smith back. Takes it all the way, and here comes Fitch for Kentucky. Counter. Loosely played, Gerald Fitch, Saul Smith. Prince for three. Look at, can he spread the day? You've got to run down and identify him, but it's so important to tag that guy. Deshaun Prince, one of the sweetest strokes in college basketball. I like Player him. of the year in the SEC. I'm sorry, Brian. I, I like him because he's got my upper body. <laughs> <laughs> of that, there is no argument. Here's Prince with another rebound. That's four already. Saul Smith off the dribble. Nope, no basket. Lead on that penetration. Jason Flanagan trying to contain. Got the small change foul. Take another look at Saul Smith's lob. What confidence, elevation, strength, open opportunities. Tough for Kentucky. However, the difficulty is you've got a great shooter over here, but you have an unselfish play over here. Gerald Fitch. Solid kick to the middle. Now you've got a fast break, and look, nobody able to get over and identify a little nylon by one of the purest strokes in college basketball. 6'9", 215 pounds. Bill alluded to his slight upper body. Mm -hmm. Don't knock it now. Not at all. <laughs> From Compton, California, 16-point average, and he also helps out on the boards with a six-rebound average per game. Here's the jump stop from Bogans. It's stripped away from him, and... Uh, John Gunn has come off the bench for Ole Miss, gets the entry pass, and Gunn 
slapped by J.P. Blevins, who also appeared on the floor during the timeout. Cliff Hawkins also came in for Saul Smith. Now there's some conversation going on over at the Kentucky bench. There must be some uh, run, yeah. possibly with with Bogans. But you mentioned the subs now for Kentucky. And looking at the last couple of weeks, Tubby has such confidence in this team now. I mean, guys that are coming in being solid. Daniels, I think, has really improved. The Stone, when he came in yesterday, was terrific. Estelle, when he played, I mean, all of a sudden, Hawkins at the point position, he has deepened his team, and they play confidently and hard. Matt John Gunn is at the line, the sophomore from Oxford. Doesn't play all that much, but for the season, 21 of 23 from the free throw line. Now he gets in there to give Lockhart a blow generally, you know, buy some time. And you've got to match their depth, too. Playing three days in a row, not easy. And Jason Harrison, the star of the first game between these two at 5-5. You see him in the background, number 11. And uh, Tubby Smith has also made changes. He's got Cliff Hawkins in with J.P. Blevins. Prince still on the floor. And Eric Daniels has also come on, number 14, who sets the pick. Nice. Nice pitch. Steps, unfortunately. Uh, solid play on the penetration. Parker gets called for the walk. Also, Wade is noted in the game. He's got good range. This could stretch the D and help the inside people for Ole Miss. A little pressure applied by J.P. Blevins. And Emmanuel Wade, who's also in. This is not a deep team, though, for Ole Miss. No, and they've got a match at least for some minutes because of the, the difficulty. Three straight days in this power-ridden conference. He can shoot it. Well, he was 4 of 5 in game one. Jason Harrison at 5'5". Five at the other end, ill-advised pass from Tayshawn Prince. That is out of bounds, and it will be Kentucky's ball. May not be able to catch that one. Uh, Prince trying to hit the home run down the middle. He'd rather the guard make the decision. In that first game, look at the three for 17 in the right column for Kentucky and 21 turnovers. Unbelievable, but not valuing the ball as well. This is their game, though. Power, Parker, one of the terrific low box performers. If he gets the duck in, you're usually dead. You've got to help scrape down. He just takes people to the rim. Sam Bowie, the uh, former All-American of Kentucky who now does their radio broadcast, was chatting with us, Bill, before the game. And he said Ole Miss was in control throughout in that first meeting between the two. No, I thought I said we weren't going to give them any attribution. <laughs> <laughs> There's Big Sam. He said they had trouble getting into their offense, Kentucky, and it forced them to play one-on-one. -on -one. one of the great passers and shot blockers both at Kentucky and in his NBA career. In that first game, Kentucky had had uh, five losses coming into the game, but those five by a total of 14 points. And they were really manhandled by Ole Miss in losing by 10. Harper with the ball, very good on runouts. We'll take that deep three as well. Good job defensively by Hawkins, but they uh, open up Kirkland for the three. Got to finish that one. Gun right position. Now Cliff Hawkins, number one, the freshman, one of seven newcomers on this Kentucky team. There's another, Eric Daniels. And he is talented too. Really runs the floor, gets in position to tip, follow. That time the little jump lefty. Two of 12 for Ole Miss and two of seven for Kentucky. Is that a product of defense or poor shooting? I, I think it's a little bit of everything. It nerves I throw in the mix as well. I think the defense has been today it's just maybe rushing the offense just a little bit. And I think the line change here, hockey or? Uh... <laughs> it, it does look, it looks like the Predators are playing here in Nashville. As Rod Barnes sends in a fresh five, he cleared everybody off the floor. So he's got his starters back on there now. Flanagan, <laughs> it reminded me of the, they're changing on the fly, Bill. <laughs> And Keith Bogans, who had injured that thumb, is back on the floor now. They've got it wrapped, his uh, left thumb. And there's a little zone on the inbound, stone in the middle. They can stretch it, dive Lockhart a little bit. This inhibits, I think, Lockhart's ability to post up. Turnover. Him. And Hawkins got Bogans. Really? Nice touch pass. That was Oh, boy. How about the extension by Hawkins at the end to finish? At the other end, ball is stripped out of bounds. It'll be Kentucky's. Well, they like the push and counter. Sanders very good at the open floor. But what you love most 
on the offensive end. If you get a turnover, the ability to finish. I think there's just a terrific give and touchback. Huh? And then use it all. Defense unable to help. Nice reverse layup by Hawkins. Now here's a foul called. No basket. And it's going to be a foul on Flanagan. That is his second. How many SEC teams will make the tournament? Find out who's in, who's out, and who's on the bubble by clicking on NCAA Hoops at the Internet's home of college basketball, cbs.sportsline.com, or AOL keyword CBS Sportsline. There is Jason Harrison, 5'5". Five five. Now, the press guide that was printed back in October listed him at 5'4". Mm -hmm. This week's release says he's 5'5". Five five. Well, Throwing an inch. He's got two pair of socks on. <laughs> <laughs> but what a competitor. Yes, he is. He said it's time for him to come to the party. That's what he told me before the game. Didn't feel he had helped as much as he'd like. He was a starter for much of last year, the sixth man this year. And there's Bogans again. And the strength he has, he can dislodge in a legal fashion using that lane and in the elevation. Now we talk about who's in and who's out in the seeds, of course, and it's been a disruptive weekend. But a lot of speculation as to where either of these two, the winner of this game, will wind up. What do you think? Uh, I, I, I'm, it's crazy. I think Kentucky's played real well. I think they would get a two. I don't know Ole Miss if they'd get a two if they won. I but, think they might. I, well, they, they probably they deserve it, but whether they would get run out, Bogans. Marvin Stone with the block. Here's Keith Bogans. And Blevins with a good look up the floor, but it's all the defense right now. I think Ole Miss has to take some time on offense now. Be patient. See if they can get to the foul line. That usually means Lockhart. Bogans has six of 11. Here's Lockhart with the screen. Justin Reed off the dribble, too strong. Boy, they really have not found their shot. Nice hustle. Levins on the floor, loose ball. The dive by Raheem Lockhart. Tries to get it into Harrison's hands and does. How about that? Oh, How about that? Well, you've got Moxie. You can't measure his heart. His heart's six five. Oh, is that great to see? And they needed one too. Took it in his own hands. Jason Harrison in high school in Little Rock, player of the year in Arkansas basketball. He was also a starter on the football team and gained 900 yards. And he got a five-second call because ah. he's ragged and Hawkins doesn't get into the defense. Oh, tell you what, they probably couldn't find them. <laughs> when he was rushing for those yards, ducking between legs, but all-out effort, Vern. Jason Harrison, Ole Miss, down by three. Later today, the moment of truth. Who's in, who is out, who's playing whom and when. Get it first and get it fast with Greg Gumbel, Jim Nance, Billy Packer, and Clark Kellogg on the NCAA Basketball Championship Selection Show. Everybody tune into that. These teams know what they're doing. Uh, so where Kentucky's going to bus home right. and on the way stop and take a look at it. The nation awaits. And uh, Justin Reed, the, I think Ole Miss is awaiting his performance. A real talented performer. Hasn't been able to do too much. Three rebounds and zip on the scoreboard. See if he can get some touches, Vern. Ole Miss has decided to stay here in Nashville until after the selection show when they'll head back to uh, Oxford. Here's the double team on Lockhart. Fights it. Can't get it. Bogans got numbers. J.P. Plevins fouled and will get credit for the basket. And it's all Bogans, too. Terrific play by Blevins at the head to make sure to square and take the defender out of the play. Uh, but anything down low, Lockhart's not able to elevate. You can see Blevins high. Little kiss, but a little guy. But Lockhart can't explode. And you just see Bogans here with a wonderful dish without charging. And Blevins just warding off defenders. J.P. Blevins did not play against Arkansas. He's been bothered with a bad knee. But he completes the three-point play in a 9-2 Kentucky run. And Vern, they're just not getting back. And that's the problem. I think they've got to force Kentucky to run their half-court set. Look at this. Fast break point. I mean, that is devastating. A lot of it's blocks and skirmishes for the ball. Harper off the bench, number five. Aaron Harper, a freshman. And there's Harper from long range. He hit three of those in the first round game here played by Ole Miss. But the uh, the troubles continue offensively for the Rebels. Power. Marvin Stone, who the last couple of weeks has really played well off the bench and had a singular, singular uh, significant contribution yesterday. Here's Harrison. 
Unbelievable, huh? A little yep. penetration, the open middle, they all can slash to the 10. 14-10, as Harrison gets two. Now, Reed is on Prince. He should probably bring him away from the goal. Oh, okay. he got him in the corner. Give it up. Hawkins in the lane, misfires. Here's Aaron Harper. Kicks it right side, nice move. Hands are ready. Now they can turn the corner defensively. I, I thought Kentucky would have some problem containing the first or second dribble. That time they did. John Gunn, the 6'10 sophomore from Ox Oxford, gets the basket. And as we near the 10 minute mark of the first half, it's a two point game. Little side pick and roll. Didn't work. No, he used the arm as well. Now Hawkins peers inside. Here's Marvin Stone. Shot clock at seven, and Gunn picks up the foul. Well, you, we're looking for some points. They're struggling in the half-court set. The little guy takes it right down the lane, undeterred because they widen out, particularly when Raheem Lockhart is out. They have that ability. You hear the penetration. Everybody pays attention to the bounce, and Gunn loads up. And Tubby Smith goes back to his bench. He'll put Saul Smith and uh, Gerald Fitch back in the lineup. You got to think these coaches are both saying, let's get into halftime, not tired and without foul problems. Such a strenuous few days on players. Three games, three days. Not easy. Logan's too strong. Rebound, Raheem Lockhart. Puts it in the hands of Jason Harris. Stone makes a slap at it. Ball's on the floor. Now Stone dives. Oh, off of Lockhart, I think. Well, that's a play where you might say a Stone has turned. Rod this, Barnes up. He's not real happy, is he? Well, what a job he's done there. Trying to keep in-state players. Reed being the first really great one. Oh, and that nice play. What do you think of it? Yeah. That was tempting to pick up. Raheem, very alert. So, <laughs> I'm innocent. I'm he, innocent. <laughs> Anytime a player would say that to me, I'd say, come on, tell me the truth now. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't me. 9.20 to go first half. Aaron Harper guarded by Bogans. Did not call. Harrison kicks it back to Harper. Little runner. Prince with another rebound and a foul. As Prince came down, the foul called on the freshman 6'5 footage. Aaron Harper. Tonight on 60 Minutes, why does a judge need Round the Rock police protection? You would too if you handed out the tough sentences she hands out. That's tonight on 60 Minutes. Uh, they, they could just concentrate on playing half-court defense, Ole Miss, and force Kentucky to make some decisions. Don't give up easy ones. They've been much better at it. Early going, Duke leading North Carolina in 1914. Ball on the floor in the paint. It will be a hell ball possession arrow favoring Kentucky. Some wild finishes this week. Uh, Extraordinary. It is. It's a wonderful time. I mean, it tells you that anybody can, if given the opportunity, if the upper echelon teams beat the opponent. Well, we had a chance this morning uh, to chat with Tom Izzo on the phone. And of course, they were knocked off the other day by Penn State, and then Illinois turns around and loses to Indiana yesterday. But, and coaches we really get upset and they're down, and so is a team. But sometimes they're more alert when they start back to practice. They realize what it's going to take. And the way they guard and rebound, they're a contender. You know that nice inside post. And a power broker, Parker. Jason Parker gets two, and the lead is back to four. And, of course, Indiana and Iowa play for the Big Ten Championship. That game to be televised next you on notice, CBS. You notice Tom is a lot nicer when you're not doing his game. <laughs> <laughs> Just looking for information. Raheem Lockhart. Oh. Nice job to rejecting the ball by Parker. Into the hands of Bogans. Here come the Wildcats. He's got to kick it out when he's got somebody on him. Yeah, gets tied up. Hell ball this time. It'll be Ole Miss. Misuse of the bounce, trying to do too much, getting into traffic. Value that basketball. You mentioned 21 in the last game. Ole Miss really hasn't ragged them because of the runouts. And the Tubby's guys have been solid in the open floor. Bogans with uh, an inadvertent use of the uh, hindsight. Mm -hmm. 16-12. Ole Miss hitting 24%. Our 
course, his teammate Flanagan. Right. Of course, his dad, their high school coach as well. Right. And Jason Flanagan's brother, Wes, was uh, an all-conference guard at Auburn in the mid-90s. There's a rebound offensively for Raheem Lockhart. Back outside, right side. Here's Holmes, not there. Over the top, too. That's what Lockhart has to do. If he doesn't have that roll on an angle, he's got to kick and find somebody. Seven minutes and 42 seconds remaining in the first half. Wildcats by four. 16-12, Kentucky has a four-point lead, and it's really extraordinary to find Ole Miss hanging in by only four despite their, their shooting woes. Well, they've been tenacious. I mean, the fast-break points that they're giving up, if they can get back and be solid defensively, firm, but Lockhart, not easy. He's got two shots blocked because the activity. I think Kentucky's defense has been marvelous. I got bad news for you. you know? The office just called. We're on the bubble. <laughs> 7.42 to go in the first half of play. 16-12. This is really an exciting time for anybody who loves college basketball. And, of course, the selection show later tonight. And all of us who are lucky enough to do this for a living await anxiously later this evening when we find out where we'll be. Just absolutely a great time of year. And they get the low post pass to Parker right off the timeout. Get it inside. And you mentioned bubble, not bubbly now. Right. Uh, these are some of the teams I'm sure waiting. And some people say, well, why them? And You want to pick a couple? Uh... How about, how about Georgia? Loses uh, here to LSU by two. I mean, the, the strength of their schedule is phenomenal. How about Xavier? I mean, they, they've had just a wonderful year. Some of the others uh, just, uh, I mean, they're praying. Yep. I mean, I'm sorry, Steve Lapis is at the chapel right now. <laughs> Johnny, John Beeline, too, down at Richmond, the same. And Greg and Clark at 6.30 Eastern with the exclusive announcement of the teams who will participate in the 2001 tournament. We should leave the bubble to Special K. I think he's got a pretty good grasp of things. Yeah. Kentucky has its biggest lead now of six. And Duke continues to lead North Carolina. Iowa, Indiana will tip off for the Big Ten Championship. That one on CBS at 3.30. Jim and Billy will be there. Who would have thought of that, right? Isn't that amazing? Going into the week. And here, he's like, that's going to make a good decision. Yes. Go. Off the glass and in. What he did is he turned away from the traffic and... A quick counter by Kentucky. You can't relax. There's Gerald Fish. Fitch, I beg your pardon. And the Reed goes up for the rebound. I don't think it was to Parker or Bogans. I'm not sure. Well, they get some points down the low box from Raheem. He gets 13. The game averages 58. How about this sweet little kiss delivery by the big fella? He just keeps working. He's the kind of a guy that... Gets in foul trouble, they have some problems with it. If he's solid making good decisions, I think they're pretty good just looking at tape. Under seven to go now. Here's Harrison. Great nice bounce pass, but a good job defensively by Parker. The quickness of Parker covered. Here's Saul Smith. Bogans in the corner, puts it on the floor. Beautiful. Oh, explosive. Disdain the scrape from the top by Harrison. He's got some power going to the 10. Eight points for Bogans. The lead is back to six at 20 to 14. Emmanuel Wade, Lockhart. Smith comes with a double. Now back to Wade. You notice you haven't said Reed much? No, you're absolutely right. And what did I just say? Ah, Justin Reed. Nice call, Bill. Just in time, <laughs> I found you. <laughs> they need that slashing ability. Justin Reed, the freshman from Jackson. That three no good. Fitch takes it away. He is an extraordinary rebounding off guard. Great story. And uh, you had the Michigan State game. Right. He finally exposed himself. I think it's just sensational. And I think that's led to his time and contributions. Back it comes for Ole Miss. Here's Harrison. And the foul is going to be called on Saul Smith. Yeah, you're right. The... Let's go back and take a look at Justin Reed. I, I, I just think his ability with the ball. Now, this is one of the best recruits they've had. Look at the jump stop, the explosion. And what they feel at Ole Miss is if they can keep one or two in state. I mean, over the years, Ronnie Henderson, Chris Jackson, Gary's, just Rice Green, Lotero Green. Think about it. Jackson, phenomenal in state. Right. If they can get those kids to stay, watch out. I mean, how good did they do this year? Here's Wade. Up and under. No. And they're going to get Gunn over the top. That's his third foul. 
CBS Sports coverage of NCAA college basketball is now interactive through Ultimate TV. Foul on Gunn, his third. And uh, they were right, 85%. Yes. They said it was a, a foul, but uh, here's a, a guard back in the 80s, and there's a, a trivia they're claiming is part of it. The only guy to be first team all SEC. Right. And first a guy and the coach of the year. year. And you came up with a possible. Well, I said, I, you know, I'll have to check with Seattle because uh, he's a terrific player. And I'm sure in his days made that team. And uh, of course, outstanding coach down at Alabama, Vandy, you name it now, as a former AD at Kentucky. Richard Kirkland in. And Keith Bogans at the line. 23 points in each of the first two games. Cans this free throw as well. And the lead is now extended to eight. Now look at the speed on Kentucky. And everybody is very mobile, and you got Parker holding it down in the block area. If they move Parker away from the block, which they are, I think they can get some drives to the 10. Kirkland's got to get him out of there. Harrison kicks it right side. They look inside, and here's Justin Reed. And that's what they do. They make the steps. Foul. Nope. Before the shot. Travel. And that's what they do. When Lockhart is out, they slip Reed in there. Just a little over-anxious. How tough is he? I got the tooth knocked out. Got it fixed. Then they tried a mouthpiece yesterday, couldn't breathe. He said his tooth is fine right now. Reed got the tooth knocked out in the first round game against Tennessee. Now Bogans. There's Prince. Parker right there. And wonderful ball movement and the pass to the correct hand. And even the weak side help couldn't stop the big fella. First double digit lead in the ball game. And this huge crowd of Kentucky fans rises as one. Reed off the glass. Bogans with a rebound for the Wildcats. Not a good angle for the, uh, the kiss shot. Prince, instead of going to the three, finds Parker in the lane, in and out. And Justin Reed, the freshman, gets his fifth rebound of the first half. Well, that's when Kentucky's on fire. You got to play the big guy out top, Prince, and then they got the dump down ability. Good defense thus far by Kentucky. Outstanding. Not many open looks. They've really paid attention to dribble drive. Now, Tubby Smith was telling us last night after the come from behind win over Arkansas that he felt that second half was their best effort of the year. And it was fueled by in your face defense. Mm -hmm. And there, right, Parker right up on Reed. Here's Gerald Fitz guarded by Harrison. Established in the low post. Parker. Ball stripped away out of bounds. It will be. Kentucky's ball. Well, you got some quick hands, but I just love their ability to get it into the low post. And Reed dead on delivery there. If it weren't for the scrape, very fortunate to get the ball back. Kentucky. Uh, Lockhart back on the floor. And Jason Holmes as well. Kirkland will leave. Now watch this little screen across in the low post if they do it. Stone for Prince, and then step to the ball. Now look, they got the high-low here. You don't play him, he knocks it down. Oh. Uh, he just spreads the floor. The guy's got a stroke. Money! And 11-2 Kentucky run. Stolen by Smith. Fitch has it. Too strong. On the floor, Smith, Harrison, number 11 and 11 battling for it. Anything on the floor, Harrison's going to get. He's closer. <laughs> Here's the 5 foot 5 inch Jason Harrison. Quick move. Adjust the shot, it will not fall. And Saul Smith is forced out of bounds. Calls time as he is uh, emulating the Tower of Pisa. <laughs> Leaning. Tayshawn Prince for three. And Kentucky leads by 13. On this Sunday, Wednesday on CBS, what happens when the NYPD and the FBI are forced to work together? Ed O'Neill stars in what Newsday calls the season's best new drama, Big Apple, on a special night Wednesday, and that is after Survivor. Well, Bogan's such a force, I think, his position out. And let's get back to, to Fitch. Here, here's Bogan's now, comes in as a small forward. Fitch starts playing real well. They right. take Stone out of the lineup, and all of a sudden, and you, you, you and Billy, in fact, called it that Fitch was playing so well, they got to find time. He came off the bench back in December in a game at Michigan State that Kentucky ultimately lost 46-45 to go to 3-5. and five. 
But Fitch played so well. He got a start against Indiana at Freedom Hall in Louisville. They haven't gotten him out of the lineup since. And Stone, in the meantime, who just missed that shot, went to the bench and has adjusted well in a substitute role. He played really well yesterday. Yeah, he has, you know, I think he got the message to I think he missed a practice in right. the... In the interim and all of a sudden started paying attention to his responsibilities as well as the rest of the team and kentucky is up by 13 now as we go to break now tuesday night march madness will debut on our cable partner tnn with coverage of the opening round game of the ncaa basketball championship from dayton check your local listings the uh, two teams who will participate in that uh, opening game will be determined later this evening and Rick Pitino is going to broadcast that uh, with Rick. Tim Brando for us. Of course, his name uh, has been mentioned here. I, I read that. In Rome, by the way. This is now Rome, <laughs> Tennessee. Nolan Richardson said that playing Kentucky here is like playing Notre Dame in Rome. There's off the line. That's uh, Bogans. Over the top, I believe, Vern. Yep. But Rick, uh, very prominent with concern. The Kentucky Blue would not like to see him at Louisville. No. He is now exalted in Kentucky. If he goes to Louisville, could have a problem getting the cab. 29-16, <laughs> Ole Miss, equal number of turnovers and field goals made. A Lockhart in uh, dictates a touch, at least get him involved a little bit, make some good decisions. Still can't get it to fall. Prince with another rebound. You can just see he can't elevate Vern over. So he's got to make some either quick footsteps or kick it out. Here's Fitch. Fall away jumper. Oh. Got it. Boy, you see something else. Play with such confidence. Can drill the three. Quick with the bounce. Gets set up early. A freshman from Macon, Georgia, who was a late add to this Kentucky squad had considered Clemson and uh, after Desmond Allison was released from the team in a disciplinary move Debbie Smith and his staff heard about uh, Gerald Fitch signed him and they signed him without taking a live look at it mm. and I'll tell you what a pretty good judgment huh yeah here's Fogans Prince, oh boy. Now he should back up the seat. Look at this, he's got 5-5 five, five on 6-9. Well, it's almost like the Prince and the Pauper. <laughs> 11 unanswered for Kentucky. And lead 15, jump hook. Harper thinks about coming with the double. Offensive board, stripped away. There's Stone, puts it up and in. They were aggressive, but they couldn't come up with it. The little guy trying to dominate. Sanders fouled by Stone. Coming up on singular at the half, Greg Gumbel and Clark Kellogg for all the latest tournament news. They'll preview the Big Ten championship game between Iowa and Indiana. I've got tournament on the mind. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking Iona here. Iowa and Indiana. They'll also talk live with Florida head coach Billy Donovan. That's coming up on Singular at the half. And you did mention Iona. Jeff Rowland's club is going to be in there. Let me chip. give you a hypothesis here. Let's uh, look at this. Duke over North Carolina by 19. Now, what does that do if that, if that kind of differential persists and the game becomes a blowout? What does me, that do to me? The I, I think they drop to a two. That's my thought. But I'm not Mike Trangisi. And aren't you glad well, you today? have no right to ask me. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Trangisi, of course, commissioner of the Big East and chairman of the selection committee that is fervently watching all of this unfold I mean, back it, in Indiana. It's wild. You know, Illinois, Michigan, Iowa State. I mean, those teams, they're hanging around. Arizona hanging around. A lot of those losses early. Arizona on a roll right now. Well, it's all speculation, and we'll know tonight, but it's, it really is interesting because beginning with Michigan State's loss to Penn State, all these potential number one seeds seem to fall. Iowa State had a, we, we all thought, had a shot. So what you're saying is, is those fall? <laughs> That's right. Uh, hung a little bit and couldn't finish their hard. Ooh. Whoa. Hey. Well, now Whoa. Use, use that aggressiveness on this end right now. In the open middle when Lockhart's out. Here's their motion. Back it goes to Kirkland. He goes to Harrison. In the corner, Reed way off the mark. And you will hear the familiar chorus now. The chant, huh? First year players. You know, you play well all year, Reed, and all of a sudden 
and the bright lights, and uh, it's just not as smooth and as confident. It's got to, I think halftime will help him. Ole Miss now 0 for 7 on three-point shots. Here's Harrison and Kirkland. The zone might just slow them down a little bit. Way outside. They had to shoot it, though. Marquise Esto is in the lineup. Here's Prince for three. Oh, he's no Prince. He's a king with that stroke. My goodness. You don't come up and get him in the early. He drills it. Tayshawn Prince, three of four on three points. Double the score. He is Hawkins got to contain. In this case now, Fitch has to contain. Sanders will go to the free throw line. I think they caught Fitch. Yep. Th this team has so many people that can penetrate for Rod Barnes. I mean, th that is pretty much their offense. Run their motion, their screens, and this is what the punishment, everybody backs up. Well, electrifying. I mean, just a little honey in that arm. My goodness. And people feel you can't teach guys to shoot that well, and I would agree with them. That is God-given and worked on. One of two this trip for Sanders. 4.4 remaining first half of play. Here's Prince again. Blocked at the buzzer. Steps. Yep. yep. Just before. But Tayshawn Prince, player of the year in the Southeastern Conference, an exemplary first half. Eight rebounds. 11 points. 26, 36, 19. And let's go back to Greg Gumbel and Clark Kellogg in New York. Celebrate their team up by 17. Our coverage of NCAA men's basketball continues after this message. And a word from your local station. Edge of the road to the Final Four is sponsored by cold-filtered Miller Genuine Draft. Never miss a genuine opportunity. Wendy's Honey Ham and Chicken Sandwich. It's all the buzz. And by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Gorgeous late winter day or early spring day, depending on your uh, perspective. Here in Nashville, Tennessee, and the Gaylord Center with a crowd of better than 20,000 on hand. Time now for the autotrader.com halftime stats. Burn. I think that one jumps right out at everybody. The ability to get out in the open floor and knock some shots down. 20% uh, shooting for the first half for Ole Miss. I mean, really, really difficulties that were almost beyond uh, imagination. Seven for 35 so far. Uh, how do you overcome something like that? Well, I, I think they have to get some easy baskets, and how you do that is teeing it up on the defensive end and being aggressive, forcing some tough shots. They haven't been able to do that. They're a team that likes to slash and get involved in the rhythm of the game. Thus far, it's been a struggle because of great Kentucky defense. A shot blocking part of it, helping one another out. Another factor, here are two blocks, and then the eventual run out is Bogans is able to convert. But more importantly, the Prince in the open floor strokes it like royalty I'm unbelievable you got to step up and play him in the early identify number two one Tayshawn Prince on the floor Bogans will inbound and puts it in the hands of Prince Justin Reed picks him up and let's identify the five on the floor for Kentucky it's Saul Smith Tayshawn Prince Parker Gerald Fitch and Bogans the starting five there's a little runner in the lane and Deshaun Prince continues as he ended the first half. Well, you got to run out and play him, but contain him. I mean, that's uh, smart. Players will do that. Good use of the bounce. Score double now, 38-19. Here's Flanagan. Sanders Reed inside to Raheem Lockhart. As Rod Barnes has his starting five, Flanagan calls for it. And the foul is going to be called on Saul Smith. That's his second. And that's what Saul does. Gets down there and helps out. With the conclusion of today's game, we'll select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund, a tradition for 30 years. Uh, Saul Smith, a little nuts and bolts, is the, his dad. 
talks to Tayshawn as to what we want run and how to defend it. Uh, the pass, Reed made a little cut and was wide open. I think Tayshawn was caught in Never Neverland. Should I double or should I follow my man? Raheem Lockhart having a tough afternoon, limited thus far to four points, four rebounds. Now Raheem around 47%. You don't have him shooting to pick sides in the playground. No. <laughs> Although, until those two, he has hit six of ten here in the SEC tournament. Now Prince with the ball. Creating something off your defense. It's essential when you're behind. Pick and roll with Prince. And then slide behind. Now Holmes trying to overplay Prince. He gets it in the right block. There's the little jump hook. Good. He's such a load. But he, the matchup is the dilemma. Do you put a smaller guy on him when he takes you outside? The big guy is just outstanding understanding of where to be depending on who's guarding him. There's the entry pass to Lockhart and a foul before the shot was attempted. Go back and take a look at this Holmes attempting to guard Tayshaun Prince. Well, Vernon, it's such a dilemma. Look at the difference in the size. I mean, you're giving away four inches. The velvet delivery to boot, uh, but just a dilemma as to who can guard him. Foul was on Parker, his first. And here is Jason Flanagan, number 22. Got to keep your poise off your Ole Miss. Be sound. Try and get yourself good shots against the zone. Now dribble, drive the gap, and find somebody spotting up. Pretty. Got to catch it, yep. though. Lockhart couldn't get his hands up. 40 to 19. And Duke continues its domination of North Carolina up by 20 at the half. You know, when you think of it, uh, Ole Miss has a couple of U.S. centers, Trent Lott, Thad Cochran, John Gresham, and one of our pals. Yes. Listed as the distinguished graduates, Terry Ewart, our executive producer. That's right. So uh, I'm sure he's very proud of what they've been able to accomplish. I think he's probably dying right now. Oh, I'm sure he is. <laughs> Along with all the other... Ole Miss grass. That one's out of bounds. Well, we talked about how much this meant. I'm sure Rod Barnes is just sick at his heart right now with uh, the effort of his team. Yeah, it's not so much the effort is the frustration. Uh, right. They have not been able to do the things that have gotten them here. Haven't been able to penetrate with the dribble. Here's an inadvertent turnover. Uh, pressure was there, but you got to look ahead and, you know, showing some flaws now as David Sanders unable to hold on to it. He's maintaining his poise, though, and I think that's what he's hoping his team will. Emmanuel Wade off the bench for Rod Barnes. 40 to 19. The teams are so much different home and away. This is neutral, but Kentucky has become a better team. Well, and also from the corner, here's Bogans for three. Neutral in name only. We're about a three-hour drive south of Lexington. Billy alluded to it in the first half. Listen to this crowd, predominantly blue. Nolan Richardson said yesterday after the loss, Arkansas's loss to Kentucky, that playing Kentucky this close to Lexington is like playing Notre Dame in Rome. Right, and the pasta isn't quite as good as Rome, but there are a few. Another turnover, here's Fitch. They do not have the numbers. And good control, good recognition. I happen to have Kentucky in Maui. Look at his deep threat, it's good. Oh. Wow, a little cut swab. I have watched some tape where he goes off seven, eight of those deep babies. He doesn't hit the 10. It's all nylon. Deshaun Prince came all the way back to Lexington from Compton, California to play. His mom, Diane, is here. His brother, Tommy, as well. His dad, Thomas, does not fly, so he's watching on television. Today's Applebee's tournament favorites. In 1996, head coach Rick Pitino led the Wildcats back to the NCAA championship for the first time in 18 years. Freshman Ron Mercer scored a career-high 20 points coming off the bench to help Kentucky win its sixth NCAA championship by defeating Syracuse 76-67. There's Bill Kitely, who's been associated with the Kentucky program since 1962. He's the only guy with the program who knew and worked for Adolph Rupp. Joe B. Hall, Eddie Sutton, Rick Patino, <laughs> Tubby Smith. He said if Patino goes to Louisville, 
I will do bodily harm. <laughs> <laughs> he will uh, get after him, I'm sure. And he said it with a smile. Uh, I, I looked at him uh, yesterday. I said, you know, we saw you sleeping during the game. He said, no, we were behind. I just didn't want to pay attention. <laughs> Arkansas with that great start yesterday. 46-19. Major disappointment for Rod Barnes, who thought this might be a real platform for his team on a national stage. Now, I'll give you one. When they won in 81, right, they played Tennessee, Vandy, and Georgia. No Kentucky. That's right. They won over Georgia by two in the championship game. 81, the only SEC championship ever earned by Ole Miss. Now, this isn't the way it should be. Uh, this is a better team, and they right now uh, losing confidence in their ability, coming up short on jump shots, pulling the string, not in any rhythm whatsoever. And this is one guy you do not want to come into your living room. An unwelcome guest with that big body. Uh, trying to save it by knocking it off a Kentucky player. Ole Miss, nada from three-point range, 0 for 10. And they'll uh, wipe up the floor. Three-point field goals. They're Nothing trying, for Ole Miss. And they're trying to extend the floor. You do all the things as a coach you're supposed to do. It's just really getting back to basics. And Kentucky, an air of confidence, would you say, Vern? Yes, absolutely. Oh, you think back, here's Bogans. Look at his strength. My goodness. Oh, put those shoulders down. Just decimating the help side defense as well. Bogans has 15. And we have 16 to play in the lead. Extraordinary. 48 to 19. Really doing a great job on the dribble drive. Everything's on the perimeter. Bottling up the post up. She reads trying to hold off. They can't get it to him. Aaron Harper got one, finally. First three-point field goal converted by Ole Miss. They need a ton of those. Now Saul Smith playing in his 140th game today. He's tied for fifth, was tied for fifth with the legendary Ralph Beard at the all-time level. Wayne Turner holds the uh, school record and an NCAA record of 151. His bombs again. Wow. Now you mentioned Saul too, as Bogans does the one-on-one. -on -one. That you really have to admire him for the job he has done under fire at times, the difficulty, the duress. Uh, it's very tough no matter where you are. A coach's son is the guy that gets the heat. I'm thinking of Al back with Allie. Allie, you McGuire know, and and Marquette. One of, one of the players wanted to play, thought he was pretty good. He said, uh, yeah, you are pretty good, he said, but I love my son. <laughs> yeah. But Saul has been a solid contributor. It just continues, huh? Hey, Sean Prince, two more. 18 points, 7 of 11 from the field. But to finish the thought on, on Saul, he's feisty, he competes, he guards his guys, the perfect teammate, he fits in, does whatever is asked for him. Fitting that he should have a terrific end to his senior year. Oh. Mitch Reed goes for the steal, knocks it out of bounds. This will be Kentucky ball. And it was pretty it was an alert play, but just come up empty. Tayshawn Prince, from close range, he can also hurt you from outside. Coming next on CBS, the Big Ten Tournament Championship to be decided between the Iowa Hawkeyes and the Indiana Hoosiers. Mike Davis, I think you can take the interim off his name. And Iowa, without Luke Rucker, trying to earn a bid into the NCAAs. Meanwhile, on the left, Diane Prince. Tayshawn's mom, and that's Tommy, his brother, who played for Pepperdine in the tournament last year when they knocked out an Indiana Hoosier team in what uh, turned out to be Bob Knight's last game at Maybe. Indiana. Jam Bob Redico, of course, they go right for the out of bounds. That's a tough play to defend. I mean, you got Estelle Marquise, a great presentation. They have some wonderful targets in the box area, don't they, Vern? They're pretty deep, aren't yeah, they? They are, and they're getting better. I think that's what's Tuffy's been able to do with this team. When you think about this Kentucky team with nine losses, but five in the early going, they lost five of their first eight. Seven of their top 12 kids are in their first year with the program. How about the schedule, though? I mean, oh, man. I mean, what people want to play the knockouts, the Carolinas and Michigan States, Indiana's, Notre Dame. I mean, just 
one after the other, and everybody's looking to get you. Well, in the SEC, this is a familiar territory for the Wildcats. 22 championships. They've won 25 of the last 27 tournament games and seven of the last nine SEC tournaments. KEC. Yeah. Kentucky, eight of nine in this half. I mean, you think back, they lose at the opening of the season to St. John's and then in overtime to UCLA. They had a loss at home to Penn State, which really ignited the criticism mm -hmm. in the state of Kentucky. They lose at Michigan State by one. But then, uh, Billy, I know you remember they had a they had a home game against Notre Dame in January that they won, and then Tennessee came to town when Tennessee was really playing on, well on top of their game. Absolutely, and I think that really established what they were trying to accomplish. But the one thing that Tubby said to us yesterday was he failed early in the year. Levin's trying to use the little dribble drive to exploit. He was saying that the concentration wasn't as good as it became eventually more and more. Talk about the tournament. Here's a segue. It leads to talk about Survivor for the next two weeks. The most watched show in America moves to Wednesday. They're down to nine castaways and politics and paranoia are everywhere. Don't miss an all new Survivor on special, special night Wednesday at seven o'clock central on CBS. <laughs> castaways, they... politics and paranoia it could apply to a lot of things we yeah. know. <laughs> uh, they, they know my family. <laughs> Here's Jason Harrison. Right side to Justin Reed, back to Harrison, off the dribble. Back outside to Sanders in the corner, Harper. Got him. Good ball movement, good rotation. And now they got to stimulate something from the defensive end. Kentucky's been so sound. See if they can get a little turnover here. Harrison with the little nickel dimer. I'm trying to find answers. The extra pass leads to the open jumper. And this has been a dilemma all game long. Harper that time knocking it down. They need a bizarre of threes. Yes. And that's uh, as B-A-Z, not B-I-C. That's right. Right? Absolutely. A-A-R. <laughs> 54-33. Somehow they've got to shake as Duke, really, stepping up. Wow. Almost got to just shake. Here's a little trap. you got to do something to invigorate this team right now. Stone. Back to Eric Daniels, who's on the floor. Estel also playing, and he can't hold on to this one. Marquise Estel has to go right through his hands and out of bounds. A little bit of steam on that one, and the Ole Miss people awakening now. Hoping their team, uh, there's a kick in the backcourt. Yeah, Hawkins the trip. Inadvertent, uh, one of those deals that refs have to call because it causes a walk. Four thirty-three. A little zone look. One one three. They extend it a little bit. Good. But go strong. Yes. Got to use the right hand though. Raheem. Eric Daniels. Call for the foul. This game is interactive through Ultimate TV. Get live stats, answer trivia, and participate in polls with Ultimate TV. Twelve seventeen to go in this one. Fifty-four thirty-three. Lockhart. At the line. See, that's why you got to have him finish. Right. He struggles. Yes. I mean, barely one out of two. Uh, so that time he turned, the pass led him to the right hand side. He was able to convert. Raheem Lockhart married a year and a half ago. He and his wife, parents of one daughter, and expecting another child toward the end of this month. I think it would be the expected date is the day they would leave for the Final Four if they were able to go that far. they got to play a little better than yeah, this. Yeah, they're, they're, they're just not. And, folks, this is a good basketball team that's playing a team that just got home. Oh, my goodness, tough little delivery. Yeah, Blevins thought he was playing horse. Now, this team has gotten better, Kentucky. And look how deep they are. Five fresh faces out there. Yeah, you got Stone, Estel. Here's Blevins. No. And Lockhart grabs the rebound. Under 12 now, but a 20-point deficit. Just keep plugging. Nice screen off. Kirkland holds off. Get to the free throw line. Maybe a little juice left. I mean, got to make a run. Stone picks up his third. Uh, Rod Barnes, I'm sure, and he's over there. He's imploring his guys, get them involved a little bit. The juice is lacking. I think it's Kentucky adding the sedative, though. Well, you know, it's all speculation and will be until uh, tonight when the selection show 
is aired on CBS. I think the conjecture has been from guys like you who know how this works. Oh boy, you are really. <laughs> you welcome. like that? Smoked. I'm gilding this, Lily. My goodness. But the conjecture has been that, that the winner of this game might get a two, the loser a three. If this consists, might, might Ole Miss go farther out? The answer to these and other penetrating questions will be forthcoming after this message and the word from your local Stacy O. 11.47 to go in this one. Kentucky up by 20. And the championship, not the only thing at stake. Also, where they will play in the NCAA. And we we're talking about blowouts and the impact. Right. This is a big decision for the committee. Is this what happens? You know, drop Carolina and move Michigan State up. Arizona, another team that's played well of late. It's just, uh, it's going to be a long afternoon, I think, for the committee. Conjecture on our part. And obviously, when it says Bill, it means Bob Monsbach and Vern Lundquist, <laughs> folks, our producer and our main man on the air. Uh, <laughs> Mike Arnold, our director, can chip in with a thought or two. And a nice little, again, energy. That's what we're trying to create. A little trap half court. And see if they can get themselves back in. There's plenty of time. And here comes, well, here comes the fresh wave. Crossing the blue line. Yeah. Duffy Smith says, okay, let's send guys like Fitch and Smith and Prince and Parker and Bogans back on the floor. It reminds me of Dean Smith when he had the blue team. Right. Same thing. They sub all Americans for all Americans. <laughs> so in this case, some terrific performers for some excellent players. I was looking at notes. They've got three McDonald's being first team on Kentucky. Ole Miss does not. McDonald's all American. And here's Saul Smith with a jumper. Duke rolling over North Carolina. And, of course, the Iowa-Indiana game will be televised on CBS at the conclusion of this one. Texas-Oklahoma playing this afternoon, and it's not football. And they clear out the side of Sanders. One of the few times able to get inside. They get a little one-on-one -on -one situation. Bogans doesn't get the contain. And that's an area of communication. you got to let the guy know it's empty. No help on this side. He jumps to the outside hand, forces it to the middle. Bogans second foul and that is the seventh team foul so Ole Miss goes to the line David Sanders on the season a 68 percent free throw shooter Jason Harrison gets a rest number 11 he goes out and Holmes is back in now they just have not been able to get all of their perimeter people in sync and that's been part of their dilemma Guys who provide a lift, he gets seven points a game, Sanders, and they're just not able to get in the flow. And it's all Kentucky defense containing. Looking for a trap. Prince now has 10 rebounds, so a double-double again for Tayshawn Prince. Sanders goes for the steal and knocks it out of bounds. Into the second row, and he gets it. Ah, sometimes when you hustle, you get some bounces. Tubby. <laughs> How hard must this job be? Oh, man. I mean, just, just think of what's expected, winning every game. It's all Adolph's fault. Starts with him. Adolph Rupp, the legendary former coach. It all started, I guess he was at Kansas as well. Mm -hmm. So goes back. Underneath, Lockhart, and one. One of the few times they're able to get it down. The correct hand, his left. Pass it right here. That tells you which way to go. And defensively, I think you've got to get up on his baseline hand that, that make him go to the middle. Here's the favorite hand. A little kiss at the end. And Raheem, who struggles from the free throw line. Does so again. One of five from the free throw line today. And good hustle. Unfortunately, too many cooks over there. Aaron Harper along with Justin Reed. Here's Fitch. Look for the trap. Flanagan and Reed in the backcourt. Here's Saul Smith and has it in his hands. Look how far they are really challenging Tayshawn. You know he can drill it from deep. Now Fitch. Pretty. 
What and uh, Parker will go to the free throw line. Now, what a great find, but he also had Prince lined up, loading up on the baseline. Well, this is an exciting part of the year for all of us who are lucky enough to be involved in the coverage of the NCAA Tournament Championship. Our coverage begins Thursday at noon and continues Thursday night at 7.30 all through the weekend. First and uh, second round games coming up on Thursday and Saturday from the East and West regions. Here's Parker. Privileged and honored to be a part of it, just like the coaches and players. 20th year of CBS's coverage of the NCAA. Well, for uh, excitement, enjoyment, and you see the ups and downs, too. It's just the place to be. Now Saul Smith applying a little pressure to Flanagan. 57-36. We near the midway mark of the second half. Now Jason trying to get him more tonight. Nice pass again, baseline. Here's Fitch. Kicked out of bounds. I think it was offline. Let's see. They get the right call. Jason got the back of his, he his heel. Well, Ole Miss making a rare appearance in the title game. One championship. That was in 1981. And this record's going to go to 0-12 against Kentucky in the tournament. That 81 team. Timeout call by Kentucky. 57-36 with nine minutes and 55 seconds remaining. Monday on CBS, see why everybody loves Raymond. Won more TD Guide Awards than any other show. Catch an all-new episode Monday on CBS. Bogan's closely guarded on the inbound play. Here's Prince, picked up by Reed. Good kick. Hey, John. Oh. Ripples the course. Separating. Unbelievable stroke. You just can't leave him. You can't help. Stay attached. At the other end, here's Flanagan trying to fire from long distance. Pitch with a rebound, and he is fouled by Holmes. Well, I think I said to you one day, margarine, no fat, no cholesterol on that stroke. <laughs> oh, my goodness, can he fill it up. Gets the puppy set. We've seen him put it on the floor. We've seen him post up. I just think stamina and strength, and wow. You can't teach that. He has hit his last six shots from the field. And is, as you can see, five of six from three-point range. He really gets in a rhythm, too. If they find him, look at him now. He's having a little fun, a little between the legs. What about his ability to create his own shot? Well, I, we saw him the one time. I don't think it's necessary for him because they play within the offense and the scheme. Pitch. This Gerald Pitch. This team's going to give people fits. <laughs> At the other end, out of desperation, really, a hurried shot from Holmes. And here comes Kentucky again. Under nine remaining. Pitch. How unselfish, huh? Yeah, it sure was. Parker misses with the shot, and Jason Harrison has the ball for Ole Miss. Two guys pass up a shot, Fitch and Tayshon. And they get the timeout now as Rod Barnes is now coaching for the NCAA, I think, don't you? Yeah, I do. Come on, guys. Sure do. Reach back. 63-36. Burn the, uh, they shoot 33% from three-point, but they spread the floor. Their main guys, Bogan's a guy who can knock him down 46, Fitch at 44. Look at the looks. I mean, stretch, and, and now you've got the ability to dribble drive, and then we saw a post feed off of that. I mean, just so much area to cover, and Ole Miss uh, in a hole, even in this run. Harrison puts it in the hands of Flanagan. Now here's uh, Kirkland, number 45. Back to Harrison. Harper for three. Yes, sir, yes, sir. And Prince with another rebound. That's 11. One and done, too. Here's your create. Yes, indeed. A rare miss. No, he can't. <laughs> <laughs> the answer to that much anticipated question. At the other end, Harrison has it go in and out. Straight. Kirkland. And Kirkland is going to go to the line. Got the inside position. That's that strength factor I mentioned with Prince. Was it unable to wrestle that away? Richard, 
Sophomore from Pine Bluff, Arkansas. Justin Reed getting ready to come back in. And he'll replace uh, Raheem Lockhart, who is limping a little bit, Bill, as he heads toward the bench. Yeah, it's been tough. I think it aches a little more, too, when you're struggling like this. And this is a team that has to spend the next couple of days just sorting it out and getting their confidence level back. Trying to remember all the good things they accomplished yeah. this year. And that's what you'll do. And it's almost one of those, let's not even look at that. Right. Let's uh, get ready, do what we do best. How easy is it for a coaching staff, though, to, to dismiss something like this as you prepare for the NCAA? Well, you knew me when I coached. You saw those red eyeballs. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't from watching film. I still see them occasionally. <laughs> 7.54 uh, to go in this one. I think you've got to be very positive, Vern, and, and just hang tough with your players. I mean, it's much like the military. You know, you're not going to win all the battles. Just be tough, compete, stay organized, have some fun, and go do it the first round. And it is time now for the Fidelity Investments Keys to Success. We just decided to make a stew here and, and uh, look at all these teams who are in. Potpourri, huh? A oh. jambalaya. <laughs> okay, no, no LSU it. lost to the other no, night. That's, uh, this is uh, just a wonderful time of year for so many institutions and the ones that I get the kick are the ones for the first time mm -hmm. and they haven't never tasted it. What a week they have in store. Remember we were talking on the way over here this morning about Monmouth's victory to get into the tournament mm -hmm. over St. Francis. They came from 20 down and how devastating that loss was to St. Francis in that program now, in Brooklyn. Now you were telling me uh, the, a nice story in the New York Times. Ron Ganulin with the coach. Right. Harvey Ayrton had a wonderful mm -hmm. column today on, on the other side of the uh, of this tournament, Har Harvey Ayrton, one of the uh, outstanding columns for the New York Times. And how St. Francis dealing with the devastation of losing a 20-point lead as they thought they were in the NCAA for the first time ever. Oh, challenging down there in the corner. Let's hope everybody's okay. Now there's Harrison on the floor. You see a young man like this of his stature, and of course, Bill, I think back to a guy like Spud Webb. And I remember getting a phone call. I was working in local television back in the early 80s. Ooh. And Spud Webb, who was then five foot four, was a sophomore at Wilmer Hutchins High School. And I got a call from a from a fan of the Wilmer Hutchins High School, and they said, we've got a five foot four inch guard here who can dunk the basketball. I said, come <laughs> on, no way. We sent a photographer out. And it may be the first time anybody saw a five foot four inch guy on television spunk the ball. Uh, it's, uh, it, 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 yeah, I was down in Ole Miss a couple of years ago, and I saw him. Oh, come on. It's got to be a relative. Right. You know, your first reaction. <laughs> and then you watch him play, and he knows the game. He, his stature is bigger underneath that shirt than it is. I give him five four. You mentioned five five. Right. right. Program. Now uh, you think of Spud Webb and Muggsy Bogues and. Jason Harrison. I mean, it, uh, it it really is wonderful to watch these kids play. And people root for them. And I'm thinking, I have a story of Spud. When he was getting off the plane, Jim Balvano said to Tom Admarco when they were recruiting him, nice post pass. Forget it. Say goodnight. Open the scramble, giving him open looks. Jim Balvano saw him coming off the plane in Raleigh, and he turned to his assistant. He said, if that's who I think it is, you're fired. <laughs> And of course, he had a great career there and later on in his professional life. But this guy will not play undeterred. And hopefully, I think there's enough hearts in this team as Duke continues to play extremely well. I think there's enough toughness in the Ole Miss group that they will rally. And I would not want to get them either Thursday or Friday. Right. Harrison gets the first. Now, Cliff Hawkins is going to come on for Saul Smith for Kentucky. And a nice warm round of applause for the senior point guard. One of Covey and Donna Smith's children. See, that's the guy, I hire him if I have a company. I, right. he wants to play. Because you know he's gonna handle everything. Yep. Step up to the plate every minute. Saul Smith, and I'm sure those folks are awfully proud of him. Not easy for the Smiths during the course of the year because people say some nasty things. Nice job by Tayshawn Prince. Just flicking it back outside. Here's Bogans on the baseline. Prince spotted up. Watch out. Why, why leave him? Get attached. I mean, he has such confidence and distance to be on control. 26 points on six of eight from three-point range. 
Here's Fitch. He'll go to the line. They are feeling pretty good. And why not? When you've got a guy with the ability of Tayshawn lighting away, in position to keep it alive when he has to, post up with the jump hook. And how about this? The cross court. Oh, I mean, he is, look at that little strut. I know that's, you know, you've got game when you can back pedal all the way down. They're going to get it out of the net, take it out. Oh, that, that is as smooth as you can get. In and out for Gerald Fitch. And it's amazing when you think of Kentucky having to tinker to figure out let, which group. And that happens during the course of the season a lot right. of times. Somebody you've overlooked in practice or the mix of guys just doesn't fit all of a sudden in practice or in the game as you did with Michigan State. Gerald Fitch steps up and he said, let's fool around here a little bit. Right. And they found speed and a smaller team and a power forward and take Sean Prince. How about Hawkins? And then he brings a sad ending to the play by throwing it out of bounds. Bogan smiling at him. And a little too much heat. That's part of growing what kind of pass went to deliver it. Oh my goodness. How about those numbers? Career high in Attacking the glass at 12, now a denial. Stolen, but then Harrison gets it back, puts it up, won't fall. And Parker clears it for Kentucky. Here's Bogans. Off the glass, beautiful bank shot in. He almost sheds people, too, with that great upper body strength. Little kiss, knockdown at the end. 71-43. And Bogans with 19 points on eight of 11 shooting. Parker. Uh, just caught disarm. Uh, you're not going to stop this little guy. Great heart. Jason Harrison gets him up in the air. <laughs> A little smile. He's not used to defending people like that. Parker with the foul and Harrison at the line. Gets it. John Prince is going to get the rest of this afternoon off. That's his mother on the left, Diane, his brother, Tommy, his dad, Thomas. We mentioned earlier, Thomas does not like to fly. He actually drove back from Southern California, from Compton, back to Lexington to watch this team play Tennessee, Tennessee right? at Rupp Arena, and they won that one. And again, in a season filled with big moments, that victory over Tennessee was very significant. And what's great about this Kentucky team is they get it to him. Even on that little past fast break, he was lingering out. If you don't have the knockdown shot, he just has people run out on him. Just such a factor controlling the tempo of this team. Rod Barnes is going to his bench. John Pilger is in. 71-45. And Prince and Bogans have equaled the number of points scored by Ole Miss. Tip, nope. Kept alive by Gunn and into the hands of Harrison. There's a trap in the backcourt. And he finds Pilger. He couldn't dribble. That was the problem. He had bounced it once. Heads up play. Hayes, no. Rebound into the hands of Gerald Fitch. Under five to go in this one. And the question becomes, how high will Kentucky be seen? And how far might Ole Miss fall? I, I, I would give Kentucky a two Ole Miss. Would you? Yeah. I, I don't think you're going to move them to one. Is no, that no, I don't. No, no, not at all. I think Ole Miss, wouldn't you think Ole Miss three? Or you would? I would think three. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, we have nothing to say, folks. I'm an, agree, uh, an agreeable sort. Well, CBS Sportsline stat of the game, three-point field goals. Kentucky 8 of 15. Ole Miss missed its first 10. For complete game coverage, go to cbs.sportsline.com. Eric Daniels. J.P. Blevins will replace Keith Bogans. And another nice, warm round of applause. A lot of players stepped up. But lately, you can say that most of the Kentucky players, they've performed on an extremely high level. Pilger, number 10, 4.35 to go, 71-45. You know, the competition in this league, too, they look Arkansas had trouble, Kentucky, nice penetration. Down to Florida, have trouble. All of a sudden, come into the tournament, start to get it going a little bit on a run. 
Estel, no. Rebound, Emmanuel Wade. Harrison. Oh, got it. <laughs> oh, how did he do that, Vern? Little magic. At the other end, Daniels misfires and Gunn clears it. And that's what Daniels does. I, I can't believe how he gets down the floor and in position to dominate. Hey, no. And Gunn, boy, he hasn't had, he's had some troubles with fouls. That's number four, three real quick in the first half. Right. Well, early in the game, I would have expected more of this kind of penetration from all the slashers in here. A little hold off of the big guy with that left arm and able to get it down. Seventy-one forty-nine, and Harrison's going to leave with twelve points and five rebounds. Is that, that, that's an incredible number. How about it? that? Uh, here's a guy that uh, you would not expect to dominate around the glass. Gets two a game on average, one point nine. But Vern, what he did, at least to me, exhibited what you're looking for: effort, concentration, giving everything you have, and that's what they can build on. Let it emanate from him. Back outside to Emmanuel Wade, J.P. Blevins defending him. There's the three for Kirkman. And Cliff Hawkins with the rebound. You know what's been nice about Kentucky? They've really respected their opponent. Uh, they have not woofed. They just right. played, running their sets, taking advantage when they can. And it shows a little class. Three minutes, 11 seconds left, 71-49. CBS Sports coverage of the Road to the Final Four is sponsored by John Deere. Nothing runs like a deer. Goodyear, serious technology, freedom from worry. And by Singular, the wireless company that believes in the value and joy of self-expression. The score is Kentucky up 71-49. One would not know that by watching Tubby Smith's reaction to a turnover just a moment ago. Well, that's the coaching of Hunt Mike Sutton <laughs> getting up at the right time. Tonight on 60 Minutes, why does a judge need round-the-clock police protection? You would, too, if you handed out the tough sentences she hands out. Tonight on 60 Minutes. That's followed by an all-new episode of Touched by an Angel and the CBS Sunday movie Second Honeymoon. It's all here tonight on CBS. He's got them cranked up at the right time of year. I think the defense, the depth, something is very helpful. I think it's three days of high-level basketball, able to compete, put people away, and come uh, back when you think of the Arkansas game. They were looked like they were in deep trouble at halftime. Yes, they did. Well, they were down, uh, this is Kentucky, they were down 40-25 to 25 with about four minutes to go in the first half. And got a Bogans three that kind of propelled them into a better mood at halftime and then dominated in the second half, spurred on by a defensive effort. But despite the, the, the really convincing fashion of this victory, this has not been an easy tournament. I mean, that obviously today has been. When you think about the depth of the SEC. Uh, this is uh, just a power laid yep. league. Estelle just able to go baseline. I mean, you're talking 16th probably. I would think. You know, this is uh, heavyweight. No question about it. 73-51. Crane has it, number 21. Too strong. Into the hands of Hestel. Here's Eric Daniels breaking out at the other end. Tries to save it, does. Hawkins. Daniels. Got the left. A little scrape. Crane on the back side. Wait. You're thinking about Tennessee and Alabama, Georgia, Kentucky, Mississippi, Alabama? I, I'll be fascinated, Bill, to see what happens. becomes North Carolina now with that uh, really overwhelming loss to Duke. I mean, there's a lot of arguments, too, when you think of you say, hey, this team played well all year long and right. stumbled a little bit down the stretch, or you say, hey, that was devastating. 
Coming up on the postgame show, join Greg Gumbel and Clark Kellogg with the Fidelity Investment CBS Sports Desk for all the latest tournament news. That is coming up next. And uh, Tubby Smith going to the end of his bench now. As Stone and Hawkins go down. Corey Sears and Matt Heisenbuttle, who has the longest last name in college basketball. He's got two shirts. <laughs> Heisenbuttle, 13 letters in his last name. Wearing number 15. He and Corey Sears are on the floor now for Kentucky. Here you go. They had to really stretch this one out to get all of the letters on there. Isn't that amazing? It's down by his waist. <laughs> I, here's, here's the depth of Kentucky's adulation by its fans. I saw Matt Heisenbuttle in our hotel last night signing autographs. I should have gone there. <laughs> that would have been a chance. Uh, they, they have an incredible... We, we were talking before about them coming here and calling it Rome, Tennessee because of Old Richard's Woo! comment. It's like playing Notre Dame in Rome. But I was in Maui. You couldn't believe the thousands of people right. at workouts. <laughs> I mean, the beach and the golf, they're at the workouts. Heisenbuttle does not get it to fall. Well, there are stories about uh, a Kentucky crowd in attendance during an exhibition trip to Japan once. And the question, how do they get the tickets? <laughs> well, that was the thing here. <laughs> and they just have, they've been doing it so long, they're very good at it. It was Nolan Richardson's understanding. Give it up. Oh! 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 oh Sears and Robert! <laughs> oh, a little pizzazz at the end. Well, if you're going to get in, you take advantage of it. More than 15 seconds of fame. He's out again. Yes, he is. They put it in the hands of Heisenbuttel. Here's Sears. Crowd oh, urging him to <laughs> shoot. Look at he him. will. Oh, a behind the back. <laughs> he's getting it all out. <laughs> now Heisenbuttel with the steal. Estel, they're going to set Heisenbuttel up. Nope, not there. J.P. Blevins. And Gunn with a rebound. Under 30 seconds to go. Well, Ole Miss, go home, say a few prayers, get yourself organized. You're too good. And Kentucky was just on fire. Big smile on Tubby Smith's face on the sidelines. 21 seconds to go. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game, Jason Harrison from Ole Miss and Tayshawn Prince from Kentucky. Chevrolet will make a contribution to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. This, the third SEC title in four years for Tubby Smith. Well, it's got to be gratifying considering December when things look glum. Yep. They just stepped up. It's all because of him, I think. Got them organized. I'm sure this is what he's telling Rod Barnes as well. From a three and five start to the season to the SEC championship. 77 55. So for Bill Raftery, I'm Vern Lundquist saying so long from Nashville, where Kentucky outlasts Ole Miss 77-55 to win the SEC title. Coming up next, the Fidelity Investment CBS Sports Desk with Greg Gumbel and Clark Kellogg in Indianapolis. Our congratulations to the Wildcats of Kentucky. This has been a presentation of CBS, home of men's NCAA basketball championship. Energized and played with a lot of enthusiasm. I thought our kids came focused and ready to play. We, you know, we got off to a tough start. Neither team was able to make some shots early, but once we got into and got our defense geared up, I thought we did a, uh, an outstanding job defensively. Also this afternoon in Chicago, IU basketball crushing the Rebels of Ole Miss. And let's head back to the Music City. Connie Leonard with more on the big, big victory. Hello, Connie. Hello, Mike. Well, the Cats played great defense today, and that's why it was no contest early on. Tayshawn Prince and Keith Bogans combined for 45 points, and head coach Tubby Smith is very happy with how his team will be entering the tournament. 
The Cats came out confident. Saw Smith to Keith Bogans for the one-hand jam, two of his 19 points. Then Tayshawn Prince drills the three. The Cats were also tenacious on defense, limiting the Rebels' inside weapon, Raheem Lockhart, to just four points and four rebounds in the first half. Just had to front him a little bit and play hard and box him out, play physical with him, and it seemed to work out today. Kentucky goes on a 17-0 run and took that advantage into the locker room 36-19 at the break. In the second half, Bogans and Prince helped continue the Cats' dominance, nailing the threes. UK put 10 more unanswered points on the board, opening up the Kentucky lead to 29. The Cats bury the Rebels in the SEC championship game 77-55. Tayshawn Prince is the tournament MVP, a double-double today, 26 points, 12 rebounds. We got to carry the defense intensity over to the next game, how well we did it against Arkansas in the second half. So I think that's what we try to do. We try to carry it over to this game, and I thought we did a good job of that. He's our go-to guy when we're in a clutch situation. We're going to get him the ball, whether he got a big guy guarding him or it's a, it's a guard guarding him because a guard can't really guard him because he's too big, and a postman can't guard him because he's too fast. I think we're peaking at the right time, and if that's a, that is a new level, then yes, I, I think we have, especially defensively. You know, offensively, we've always, you know, we've shot the ball well all year long, 48% plus, so and we've rebounded the ball fairly well this year, but our defense was always, and our, our concentration and focus. Was now, Mike, the crowd was chanting, chanting one more year to Tayshawn Prince. Of course, they were fearing that he might enter the NBA draft at the end of the season, but he didn't want to talk about that. He said he wants to remain focused for the tournament. And uh, we'll turn it back to you. We'll have more post game coming up at 11 o'clock. All right. Thank you very much, Connie.